First of all, welcome everyone. It's really great to see you all here and even more people uh, joining online. Uh, my name is Atu, and I'm going to do the mandatory part of the evening. So give you an overview of data science at Vault. What do we do here? And let's see if I can. Yeah, the mandatory part. So overview of data science here at Vault. So uh, hopefully uh, most of you know a little bit about Vault and food delivery. So uh, for example, through our app, you can place an order, the restaurant prepares the food and courier delivers it to you. And that's where the whole story started. But after that, we have moved beyond that. So nowadays, if you look around you in the city, pretty much anything you see there is hopefully something that we could be delivering in minutes. So we have moved from restaurant food into retail, We're delivering retail items, pet food, flowers, electronics, pharmaceutical, like all sorts of things in different markets. And we're also operating our own grocery stores, vault markets. So that has been a, a big change for us in the, in the business. There's some numbers here. Uh, it's supposed to give you an idea about the scale. Uh, I've been with Vault for less than two years, and I can say that some of those numbers have doubled or tripled while I've been here. So there's a tremendous growth in the, in the past years. Currently, Vault operates in 23 different countries, more than 300 cities. And quite often when I talk about uh, Vault with different people, uh, not everyone really knows that we, for example, operate in Japan, where we are operating in multiple cities, but also have a product development team located there. And then uh, hopefully, again, many people have heard about DoorDash, which is probably the biggest player in the food delivery business in the US. So Walt was acquired by DoorDash. The deal was closed over the summer, which means that we're now the international branch of DoorDash. And we we'll continue to operate uh, under the Walt brand and, and using the Walt uh, app and the stack. But we are, of course, discussing and learning and sharing together. And our business then, what do we actually do? So Walt operates a three-sided marketplace. We have customers looking for something, we have merchants with the goods, and then we have couriers who actually make the deliveries. And we are building, maintaining, operating the platform that connects all these three parties in a seamless manner. And uh, we have also developed and built quite a lot of tooling and technology for that. So we have the end user app for Vault customers to browse the content and find out what they want to order. But there's also a lot of tooling for other parties. So there's a lot of tooling for merchants, how they manage the menus, how they do integrations, and how they, for example, handle the orders, and also for couriers who actually make the deliveries. But then again, there's a lot of like internal tooling as well. So we operate those vault markets. We have pretty much built everything that you need for that purpose internally. Uh, we operate local support teams in all of the countries where we operate. So they need a lot of tooling as well. So there's a lot of hidden beneath the surface and the end user app that people might see. And then I mentioned about the growth. So there's been tremendous growth in the volume uh, in the operations, but there's also been quite a lot of growth in complexity of the business that we do. So the addition of retail, for example, uh, previously, if you were browsing a food menu from a restaurant, you probably didn't need that much help for that. But if you're browsing the inventory of a retailer that has thousands of SKUs there on their, on their inventory, we probably need to do something to help you find what you're looking for. Another example could be search. So if you put a search query into our app for pizza, um, it could be a cuisine, it could be a margarita pizza from a venue nearby, it could be a frozen pizza from a retailer, it could be ingredients from the grocery store uh, to actually make your own pizza at home. So there's been a lot of changes uh, through the addition of retail, which has increased the complexity of what we do, which means that the data science is also growing at Vault. So there's a lot of new use cases surfacing for data science and machine learning. And then I wanted to say a few words about uh, data science, the actual work at Vault. When, when discussing with different people and companies, you notice that the title data scientist often contains quite a lot of different things and the profile and the scope of the role might, for example, vary quite a lot. So I'm trying to describe here, what do a data scientist actually do? Uh, 
most of them, not all, but most of them are actually focusing on building and developing machine learning features for our products. And they work embedded into product teams, working together with engineering people, product people, designers, and analysts. And hopefully they can work end to end. So we always try to staff the teams in a way that they can actually fully own that domain and, and deliver end to end. So we have a couple of speakers coming uh, later tonight. And, and let's, for example, pick Shasha as a guinea pig there. He has spent quite a lot of time with our personalization team. And that is a team that completely owns that domain. They develop and maintain the algorithms that surface content and personalize the experience on our app. Um, there's something, something on the screen there. The team also plans the work that they do. They do all the development. They also do deployment and they also do maintenance. So this has some implications for the data scientists at Vault because it means that if you are part of a team like that, you're building something related to machine learning, that team needs to take it live and also maintain it there. And that team also is accountable for understanding the impact of that work. So quite often the data scientists are involved in running experiments, for example, AP tests to really understand what's the impact of the work that they're doing in that team. But luckily we haven't left it all for the teams to figure out by themselves. So we have also been developing our internal machine learning platform. So we have a dedicated team doing machine learning tooling for us. And it's uh, basically built on open source tooling that we have been stitching together. So there's a common tooling and process in place how to build and deploy machine learning solutions. The key components are mentioned there. So we use Flight for orchestration, MLflow for metric, Seldon Core for real-time serving of the models. And then there's a lot of templates, automation, best practices that we're using to stitch them together and make it easier for the data scientists to actually use them. And this is a journey that we will continue. So hopefully next year, there will be new components added to the platform, new functionality, even more easier usability for the data scientists. And then what do we actually work on at Vault? So this is a very high level overview of some of the domains. I've just like dropping domains and, and, and areas there. But if you think about like already the three-sided uh, marketplace there, that platform, it, it already offers like three entities to work with, with the consumer, courier, and the merchant. So if you're doing something CRM related, for example, building churn models, I think it already gives us like three entities to do that with. Logistics is hugely important for us, of course, uh, how efficiently we can make those deliveries happen. Uh, there's a very strong focus on experimentation. Uh, I mentioned those support teams in all of the countries. There's a lot that we can do with machine learning in order to help their lives and also make the experience better for the customers. We have teams for FinTech, retail, Vault Market. What I'm trying to say here is that Vault really has an enormous amount of like future opportunities for data science and machine learning. And I think we're still like sort of a, a scratching the surface there and see like where the journey will lead us. Just going to say a couple of words about a few domains here. So one of them is everything customer related. Uh, personalization is one area where we're quite active, of course. So, so we have a team trying to understand what the customer is trying to do and how we can surface relevant content on different surfaces there. Uh, there will be more details about that work later tonight. We have a, a focus on search as well, as I mentioned. Uh, the addition of retail, for example, has increased the complexity there. So again, trying to make it easy for people to find what they're looking for, whether it's a global search or in-venue search, that's something that we're actively solving all the time. And then we have that team around marketing technology that Erlin mentioned, and we will also hear about more today. Uh, that team is sort of a being there to make sure that our marketing uh, uses their budget in an effective manner but they also work on anything sort of a customer campaign related. So they work on topics like lifetime value models, churn models, basically any kind of help that the marketing teams actually need. Logistics, understandably quite core domain for us. We develop and maintain our routing, our routing algorithm inter internally. So 
this is how we set up the optimization problem for the logistics and how we actually solve it as well. And it's completely in-house uh, developed and managed at the moment. And one, one curiosity there is that if you're interested to see how, for example, the logistics side works, uh, there's a high level description of that in our algorithmic transparency report that is publicly available uh, through different means. Uh, another topic that that particular team works on is the different time estimates. So if you're browsing Vault app, you, you will always see the time estimates there saying that if you order from this place, it'll take 10 to 20 minutes. That's coming from a machine learning model. That's quite important for us because it creates expectations for the users. Um, so that, that's one like very, very important model that the team is working on, but there's also others. So we actually split the whole delivery journey into multiple smaller steps, and we try to model and estimate those separately as well. So we, for example, work on prep times. So when there's an order, we try to understand that how long does the restaurant actually or the venue need in order to prepare the order. Then we do separate estimates for pickup, drop off and travel times. So if the courier is picking up something curbside, it's probably quite fast. If the courier is picking up something from a huge mall that's five stories with a separate parking, it's gonna take a little bit longer. So we're basically modeling all of this and taking it into account. And again, for example, this team is, is utilizing heavily switchback experiments and A-B testing to understand the impact of the work that they're doing and the changes that they're doing to the algorithms there. I think we're going to probably take the questions at the end of the presentation, right? Yeah, just wait a second. Um, there's not many slides left. So supply and demand is also one domain I wanted to quickly mention about. So it is quite important for us to be able to understand what's coming ahead. So we're also forecasting both demand and supply side. So demand is basically the orders coming in, supply is the availability of couriers for fulfilling those orders. And we do forecasting on different time horizons for different use cases. So it might be something from intraday to days to weeks to months for different purposes, whether it's trying to activate couriers to make sure that they are available into planning, ordering gear, making sure that we have a proper onboarding funnel for the couriers in different markets. And then the interesting topic here is the imbalance situations, because if something happens, if we don't have enough couriers, it means that the deliveries will take a long time, and it means that customers are gonna be unhappy. Then again, the other side of that is that if we don't have enough orders, we have couriers online, but they have nothing to do, they're gonna be pretty unhappy as well. So the balance is what we look after here, and it's, it's actually applies to the whole, whole marketplace that we operate. So the team is also looking at like, what can we really do when there's a situation where we see that there currently is, or is going to be an imbalance. And then I'm, I'm getting to the end of my, my show. So uh, it probably does, doesn't come as a surprise that Walt is hiring and a lot. So uh, if you can check our LinkedIn or, or the Walt career site, there's a lot of open positions there and a lot of them for data science as well. One thing I need to mention that uh, there are different locations there, different countries and cities mentioning. Don't mind them. We're happy to discuss anyone with like any of the locations where we can hire. So there's some, some roles listed there. There's plenty of more online. And if you see anything interesting, uh, let's talk. I guess that's pretty much my intro today. Thank you. Thank you very much, Alton. <laughs> yeah, I can take that. Yeah. Thank you. We can take the questions. It's an interesting question. Uh, I, I think I would say that, like currently, we are developing our own business, working together with with Dodas, of course. And that, that's that's probably where we are. But like uh, I think, like you know, collaborations and all these things, these things are probably something that other people will be looking into if they are. There's a couple. Of...
Thanks, thanks for that. So hopefully everyone here heard the question. Uh, we have, of course, rules in the organization that will help to find alignment between the teams. And we also organize teams into something we call groups. So they are like natural entities of teams working on a, on a similar domain. Uh, other than that, you're really like spot on with the, with the understanding there. So like, for example, we have teams that own certain kinds of data. And if someone else needs to uh, touch that, they probably need to talk to each other. But like I said, we have roles for that. And we also have some central teams that help with uh, pretty fundamental teams like data ops, DevOps, and so on. So these are also something that uh, can be helpful in this kind of situations where teams need to collaborate on something. Thank you. We had a yeah. Justin. Yeah, I'm Ash from Kone. Uh, I have a question for you regarding maintenance of the models. Uh, in terms of effort estimated or effort spent for building and developing the model versus maintaining it, uh, what's the ratio, let's say? Um, ratio, I guess that also depends on the teams, their maturity and how complex things they're maintaining. I would generally say that like a team should probably reserve something like 20% of their time into making sure that things run. So, so there's always uh, version upgrades, all the dependencies to solve and these kind of things when things happen. But as a rule of thumb, that's what, we, what I would say that reserve at least that much, but then, you know, if things go well, you can spend that time on something else. Thank you. We can also take some questions from online. So there sure. was one question. Uh, what are some of the typical measures you use in A-B tests to validate, not just model performance, but customer ex experience and business impact? It's a, again, a good question, but really difficult to answer in a way that, that it completely depends on the domain. Uh, and, and now I'm sort of a drawing blank when I'm thinking about like the metrics again, but it, it really depends on the team that what are they building and what kind of metrics they're using. So they usually have some kind of objective. So, so maybe they're looking at conversion, for example, but there's always guardrails as well. So you usually want to improve some metric and make sure that certain other metrics don't go any worse. So, but that, that really depends on the, on the team in question that like what kind of metrics they're using. I don't have any like general advice on that yeah. topic. Yeah, maybe we can take one more small, small question. They were wondering how many data scientists we have. How many data scientists do we have? We have currently around 15 data scientists working embedded into different teams. Hopefully there's going to be a lot more. Yes. Yeah, we can take one more. Uh, this is probably going to be a bad question, but uh, <laughs> I'm thinking in, in perspective of feature engineering you mentioned. Like most of the time, data scientists spend a lot of time in feature engineering. So some of your models predict the estimated time uh, a courier would pick up the food or deliver or the preparation time. And that kind of involves geo coordinates. Uh, but I'm thinking like, uh, do you actually use geo coordinates or like street addresses of the hotels or restaurants as like features because uh, that might lead to overfitting or something, or do you like use distance measures of some kind of, and if you do, what would be like the evaluation metrics? So I'm just trying to have like a general technical uh, overview. Yeah, I'm just thinking also how to answer that question. So location is quite important for us. And, and, and of course, like we use location information. Uh, usually it's not like on an address level, but mapped to some hexagons or something like that. And uh, it really depends again on the model that like what kind of features they're using there and, and, and how they're using those. And uh, like, for example, those uh, delivery estimates that you see when you're placing an order. Of, of course, we need to have an understanding of where you are and where the delivery is going to be because we need to have an idea of how long the distances are. So they're definitely used in that, that uh, connection. Is there anything else that you want me to add there? Okay, thank you.